It's as easy as that. Disabling a Buick SIR system can be performed within a matter of minutes. And working with and around the Buick SIR system is the purpose of this program. We'll take a look at how to identify an SIR equipped vehicle, where the components are located on each vehicle, and how these components work together to make up the supplemental inflatable restraint system. We'll also look at special safety and service considerations related to SIR components. Buick vehicles currently equipped with SIR systems include the Park Avenue, Riviera, Riata, and the Roadmaster Wagon. Now, this program is a general overview meant to familiarize you with the SIR system. Now, if your job is to repair SIR systems, attend class 22008.15 at the GM Training Center. The Supplemental Inflatable Restraint System is an airbag system designed to supplement the vehicle's existing lap and shoulder belts. In a crash, the lap and shoulder belts distribute the stopping force over the strongest bones of the body and help keep the driver in the seat. In certain frontal crashes, the driver airbag supplements this protection by distributing the stopping force more evenly over the driver's head and torso. There have been many myths spread about dangers posed by airbags. These myths simply are not true. Technicians all across the country have expressed concerns about working with SIR systems. The questions they posed were typical. I've heard the airbag assembly gets red hot and smokes once it goes off. Is that bad for you? Well, there is a chemical reaction, however. When the SIR system has deployed, the airbag itself is not hot to the touch. A few of the inflator module components will be hot for a short while, and there may be a small amount of smoke, but it shouldn't be a concern. When the airbag deflates, some of the small particles from inside the bag are discharged. These airborne particles look like smoke, and some of the particles are deposited on and around the airbag. These particles are primarily made up of cornstarch, which is used to lubricate the bag as it deploys, and the byproduct of the propellant's chemical reaction. The only known potential irritant from the chemical reaction is sodium hydroxide. But upon contact with the air, this chemical immediately converts to sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate, which is more commonly known as baking soda. Is it true that the chemicals used in the inflator module are toxic and very unstable if exposed to water? Sodium azide is the main component of the propellant. Sodium azide is toxic if ingested in pure form, but it is sealed within a metal canister until ignited, and there's little chance water could come in contact with the chemical. As the propellant ignites, the sodium azide converts to nitrogen gas, and nitrogen gas makes up 80% of all the air we breathe. There's no detectable amount of sodium azide in the passenger compartment. I install stereos in an occasional telephone, and I'm always worried that the SIR system is going to go off when I'm leaning in front of it. It is perfectly safe to install components around the SIR system, providing you disable the system first. What causes the airbag to go off? Would it go off if I kick the bumper? The system is designed to activate when a frontal collision equal to colliding with a fixed barrier at about 14 miles per hour occurs. And this is roughly equivalent to hitting another similar car at about double that speed. And this collision must take place within approximately 30 degrees of the vehicle's center line or deployment will not occur. What is it like when the airbag inflates? I hear it totally blocks your vision and you can't steer. <laughs> the bag does inflate very quickly directly in front of the driver, but since it deflates in a fraction of a second, it will only impair the driver's vision momentarily, and steering is not affected. Is there any routine maintenance for SIR systems? There are no air-filled canisters to leak air, and there are no routine maintenance procedures required. And that about answers the most commonly asked questions about SIR systems. To identify an SIR equipped vehicle, look at the steering wheel hub. If it is larger than the standard hub or has the words supplemental inflatable restraint, the hub is part of an SIR system. 
SIR vehicles will also have the number three in the seventh position of the vehicle identification number. The VIN number is visible through the bottom of the windshield on the driver's side. Let's look at where the SIR components are located. The actual airbag or inflator module is located there in the steering wheel hub. Directly behind that is the coil assembly. At the base of the steering column is the yellow SIR wiring harness connecting the inflator module through the coil assembly to the rest of the system. A diagnostic energy reserve module, or DERM, is located in different places on different vehicles. In the Park Avenue, it is located behind the dash on the far right-hand side of the instrument panel. In the Roadmaster Wagon, Riviera, and Riata, the derm is located behind the left-hand side of the instrument panel near the steering column. In the Roadmaster Wagon, a small resistor module will be found on the same bracket as the derm. In Riata and Riviera, the resistor module is located behind the center of the dash. And in Park Avenue, the resistor module is directly behind the glove box. There are three separate sensors. Two are discriminating sensors, and one is an arming sensor. On the Park Avenue, Riviera, and Riata, there is a forward discriminating sensor located in the area behind the grill in front of the radiator. The second discriminating sensor and the arming sensor are located in the dual sensor located beneath the dash. The Roadmaster does not use the dual sensor. There are two forward discriminating sensors located on the radiator supports near the headlight openings. The Roadmaster uses a separate arming sensor located in the center of the instrument panel above and right of the steering column. An SIR system warning lamp is on the instrument cluster. Let's look at just how these components work. We'll start with the derm. The diagnostic energy reserve module is a solid state device that performs three functions. First, it provides a 36 volt energy reserve to the system to assure an uninterrupted power supply in the event of vehicle voltage loss. The derm maintains voltage for up to 10 minutes after the ignition is switched off and the battery has been disconnected. Second, the derm provides diagnostics by testing steering column circuit resistance and monitoring voltage drop across each component of the system. If the derm senses an out-of-range condition, it lights the SIR lamp and stores a trouble code in its memory. Finally, when the derm senses SIR deployment, it stores code 51 in its memory along with other SIR information. Since ignition voltage is supplied to the system as well, the derm can be disconnected and the system can still deploy. The inflator module contains the inflatable bag, the propellant canister, and the ignition device or initiator. During deployment, current heats the initiator which ignites the sodium azide. The sodium azide then undergoes a chemical reaction to produce nitrogen which fills the bag. The coil assembly contains two conductors which allow steering wheel rotation while maintaining electrical contact between the inflator module and the system. Each vehicle uses two discriminating sensors. The sensors are normally open switches calibrated to close when a dramatic change in vehicle velocity occurs, the type of change present during a more severe frontal collision. Each sensor consists of a tube, a magnet, a set of gold-plated contacts, and a gold-plated ball. The ball is secured by the magnet. Once the kinetic energy of the ball overcomes the magnetic field, it travels forward and completes the circuit. The arming sensor on all vehicles, except the Roadmaster Wagon, is located within the dual sensor. The Roadmaster Wagon has a separate arming sensor. The arming sensor applies voltage to the inflator module during a frontal collision to initiate system deployment. The two discriminating sensors and the arming sensor operate in a normally open mode. However, each sensor does have a low amperage current which passes through a resistor parallel to the normally open switch contacts. These resistors 
plus those in the resistor module help the Durham to detect circuit or component faults. The SIR warning lamp is controlled by the Durham and indicates operational status. When the ignition switch is turned to run, the derm flashes the lamp seven to nine times while performing a system check. This indicates self-diagnosis is in progress. If the lamp remains lit, does not light at all, or comes on while the engine is running, a system fault is indicated. To help reduce the chance of unwanted deployment during service, shorting bars are used. One shorting bar is located in the inflator module connector and a second bar is located in the coil assembly connector at the base of the steering column. These shorting bars help prevent unwanted deployment any time the coil or inflator module are disconnected. These shorting bars act to isolate and short out the disconnected portion of the circuit. This prevents the current from flowing through the inflator module, reducing the possibility of unwanted deployment. A third shorting bar is located at the derm connector. This shorting bar causes the SIR warning lamp to light if the derm is disconnected. We've seen where each component is located and how they operate. Let's now look at the entire system in action. When an SIR equipped vehicle is in a frontal collision sufficient enough to close both the arming sensor and at least one of the two discriminating sensors at the same moment, deployment conditions have been met. At this time, both voltage and ground are applied to the inflator module. The propellant is then ignited, causing system deployment. And because the inflator module deployed at just the correct moment, the driver of the vehicle may escape serious harm, especially if they were wearing the lap and shoulder belt. Once an SIR-equipped vehicle has been in a collision, the SIR components in the area of damage must be inspected. And before these inspections, the system must be disabled. At the beginning of the program, we showed you just how easy it is to disable the SIR system. You turn the ignition to the off position. Remove the SIR fuse from the fuse box. Remove the left-hand sound insulator and disconnect the yellow two-way SIR wiring harness at the base of the steering column. It is vital to disable the system whenever working on or around any SIR component. This means when installing a telephone or radio or performing any procedure which involves removing an SIR component. This reduces the possibility of accidentally deploying the system. After a collision, each sensor, bracket, and harness and the damaged area will need to be inspected. If any brackets are distorted in any way, they must be replaced. Service SIR components by replacement only. If deployment occurred, the dual or arming sensor, discriminating sensor, and the inflator module must be replaced, and code 51 must be cleared from the derm's memory. As with other service procedures, always wear gloves and safety glasses when removing a deployed inflator module and wash your hands with mild soap and water afterwards. These precautions will help prevent skin irritation in the unlikely event that any irritating residue is present on or around the deployed module. When moving or carrying an undeployed inflator module, always carry the module with a bag and trim cover facing away from your body. Do not carry the module by its wires or rest the module on a work table with the bag facing down. In the unlikely event of accidental deployment, this face-up positioning will prevent the module from catapulting the assembly through the air. When handling sensors, care should be taken not to jar or strike any sensor prior to, during, or after installation. If a sensor is jarred significantly, this could cause the sensor to momentarily close. When mounting the sensor, position the arrow facing toward the front of the vehicle. The keying of the bracket should ensure this, but note the arrow nonetheless. When installing and mounting a new sensor, always use the proper sensor. All sensor calibrations and electrical connectors are designed uniquely for each vehicle series and are constructed for a particular mounting bracket. Always torque the sensor and bracket bolts carefully and never power the system up until this is performed. 
When diagnosing the system, you can use the T100, Tech 1, or onboard diagnostics to read codes. You'll find two types of codes. Current codes that are detected during the current ignition cycle and erased when the fault is corrected, and history codes that include all SIR faults detected since the last time the memory was cleared. You can clear these codes using both the T100 or Tech 1. The Riata and Riviera systems use the onboard diagnostics to access SIR codes. Well, there you have it. An overview of the state-of-the-art Buick Supplemental Inflatable Restraint System. It has been designed with great care, but does take a little expertise to work on and around. By taking the simple precautions we've shown you while working around the system, you can help reduce any risk of injury caused by an unwanted system deployment. And that means you can work with confidence.